Christmas Eve and twelve of the clock. Now they are all on their knees, an elder said, as we sat in a flock by the embers in hearthside ease. We pictured the meek, mild creatures where they dwelt in their strawy pen. Nor did it occur to one of us there to doubt they were kneeling then. So fair a fancy few would weave in these years, yet I feel if someone said on Christmas Eve, Come, see the oxen kneel, in the lonely barton by yonder coombe our childhood used to know, I should go with him in the gloom, hoping it might be so. Like a lot of poems written during roughly the second half of the 19th century and the earlier part of the 20th century, The Oxen is a poem about the loss of faith. It's a fairly straightforward poem, but the poet describes things in such a way that the reader needs to engage with the words on the page in order to understand it clearly. For example, what exactly is the timeline of the poem? The first stanza tells us what an elder said at midnight on Christmas Eve, so let's begin by picturing that. Now they are all on their knees. What does they refer to? We need to look at the context. On hearing the elder's words, Hardy tells us, we pictured the meek, mild creatures. So we know the elder is talking about animals. And the title of the poem is The Oxen, so we can be pretty sure that this is what he's talking about. But who are we? And why would the animals kneel? Hardy tells us two things about the group surrounding the elder. First, he says, we sat in a flock by the embers in hearthside ease. So we know that they were relaxing by the fireside. And he says, nor did it occur to one of us there to doubt they were kneeling then. So we know they believed the elder. We also know that it's Christmas Eve. Then, as now, Christmas Eve is a time when families get together. The evening before Christmas is the beginning of the Christmas holiday. We can suppose that those gathered around the fire are family members. Midnight on Christmas Eve is traditionally the moment when Christmas begins. For Christians, it's an especially holy time. Churches have a special midnight mass at this time, celebrating the birth of Christ. We're talking about the tradition in England here, of course, not about whether there really was a baby boy called Jesus who was born at that time. The point is, it's a time when people in England would celebrate the birth of Christ. Now we come back to the time frame. The opening sentence of the third stanza is key here. So fair a fancy few would weave in these years. So fair a fancy is a formal or old-fashioned way of saying such a fair fancy, and a fancy is a fanciful idea, something that people imagine. So what would that fair fancy be? We can imagine that the elder is saying that the oxen are kneeling in honour of the newborn baby Jesus. So we've got almost the full picture now. The family is gathered round the fireside on Christmas Eve and an elder is saying the oxen are all on their knees. But the poet says that in these years few people would imagine such a thing. That's a hint that the fireside gathering and the elders' words all happened years ago. And that's reinforced by that line our childhood used to know in the last stanza. There are one or two words here that may be unfamiliar, but we can safely avoid them. What matters here is that there is another voice, someone, also on Christmas Eve, saying that the oxen are kneeling. And this is where we get to the heart of what Hardy is saying here. It's many years since, as a child, he was told that the oxen would kneel in honour of the baby Jesus at midnight on Christmas Eve. At the time he believed it, just like everyone else, 
But, he says, very few people believe that kind of thing in these years. That is, at the time when he wrote the poem, sometime in the early 20th century, when he was in his 60s or even 70s. But he would like to believe it. Insofar as Hardy believed in God in later life, it was, at best, as an indifferent creator, unmaliced, unimpassioned, nescient, as he wrote in The Dynasts, and, at worst, as some mean, monstrous ironist who had made this world merely to watch the throbbings of its captive lives. Hardy is famous for his pessimism, but as this little poem shows, he would have been happy if his scepticism could have been proved wrong. Even though his reason tells him that the story of the oxen kneeling was just a comforting lie, even as an old man, if someone had told him that they really were kneeling, he would still have gone in the gloom, hoping it might be true. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you want and are able to give practical support, join as a channel member.